Study the velocity versus time graph below for the motion of a car traveling east. Okay, so we've looked at velocity time graphs before. So here's velocity and here's time. The first question, define the term acceleration. Well, remember, acceleration, when I've showed you the formula for acceleration in our lessons, we went like this. So it's the change in the velocity over the change in time. So the way that you would write that is, it is the rate, whenever we talk about time, we say rate of change of velocity. So it is the rate at which the velocity changes. That's what, that's what time is. So rate of change of velocity. Use the graph to describe the motion of the car in the following sections. Okay, the first section that they would like us to look at is AB. So from A to B. Okay, so if you look at the velocity at A, it's zero. If you look at the velocity at B, if you read its velocity, it's 10. And if you look at the time, it's 20. So what we can say is that the car accelerated from zero meters per second to 10 meters per second in 20 seconds. The next question says, use the graph to describe the motion between CD. Now some learners, they will immediately say, oh, Kev, 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 the object's not moving, hey? That's not true. You gotta be careful. If it was a displacement time graph, then you would be correct, but it's a velocity graph. So think about this carefully. At point C, the object is moving at 40 meters per second. So it's definitely moving. At point D, ooh, it's also 40. That means the object is moving between C and D, but the velocity is not changing. So we can just say that the object or the car is moving at a constant velocity. Moving at a constant velocity. And then EF, what is the velocity doing at EF? Well, now we can say the car is moving at a, is not moving, why? Well, if you look carefully at E, what's the velocity? Zero. At F, what's the velocity? Zero. So the object is not moving. So we can say the car is not moving. This question of ES is calculate the acceleration between D and E. Now, remember, acceleration is this. So all that you do, okay, is you gotta think about this. Is D the initial or is E the initial? Well, so remember that the, the initial is the start and the final is the end. So if you look at these two, which one's the end and which one's the, the start? Well, look at the time. This one's time is at 50. This one's time is at 60. So what comes first? Well, 50 comes before 60. So this is the start and this is the end. Or well, this is the, yeah, the end. So that means that this is the final position. So we'll get our final values over there. And then this is the starting position. So we will get our starting values over there. So now we just use the formula. So the first for the value is the final velocity. So we go to the E because that's the final. And to read off the velocity, you go to the Y axis, which is the velocity. And what is it? It's zero. So we say zero. Then we say minus. Now we need to go to the initial velocity, which is at the initial position. So that's here. So to read off the velocity, you go to the Y axis, which is a 40. Now to find the final time, we go to the E, and now we read the X axis, which is time. So that's gonna go down to, that's 60 over there. And then you go to this point over here. But now to find the time, you don't go this way, because that's velocity. You rather go to the X axis, because that is time. So you go down, 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 down. And so what is it? It's 50. And so if you had to calculate this, you should eventually end up with negative four meters per second to the negative two. But now they told us in the beginning that the car was originally moving east, right? And all of these are positive values. So the car was definitely going east. And so what we now do is we don't leave this with a negative. We, there, we then say, therefore, the answer will be four meters per second. 
So because east is positive, but we got a negative answer, you're going to say west. Okay, because that's the opposite of east. And then uh, this question here says that in which section AB, so this part here, or BC is the acceleration the greatest? Well, this is an easy one. Let me explain. We know that acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Now, for some learners, you might also remember or you might also understand that acceleration is the gradient of the velocity time graph. So then immediately, and I will explain this in a different way shortly, but immediately you would know that the answer is BC because it's got the steepest gradient. And if acceleration is the gradient, then this part here would have the greatest acceleration because it's got the steepest gradient. But let's prove that now using calculations. So once again, we know that acceleration is this, right? So if we look at AB, section AB, so from here to here, then this is your final, and this part here is your initial. So if we had to work this out, your final velocity is 10. Your initial, uh, what is your initial velocity? Well, that's this one, so that would be zero. Then your final time is 20 and your initial time is zero. And so if you had to work this out, you'd end up with 0 0.5 meters per second. Now, if we had to go do the same thing for BC, then all of a sudden, B is now your initial position, and C is now your final position, because that comes later. And so your final velocity is then gonna be 40. Your initial velocity is then gonna be 10. And then your final time is 30, and your initial time is 20. And so if you had to go work this out, you're gonna end up with three meters per second. And so can you see that at BC, the acceleration is larger than at AB? So the answer is definitely gonna be um, BC, and we can just say the gradient is the steepest. So just remember that, well, I'm writing really ugly. So just remember that gradient, the gradient of a velocity time graph is the acceleration.